We're on location out here at Canal 20 near the West Shore area and we're going to be working on a seagrass relocation project this morning. As you can see behind me, we have some scientists working right now removing some of the seagrasses so that we can relocate them approximately 300 yards in order to get the dredging project complete. Let's go over and take a look. Big brownie. Out here this morning working on a seagrass relocation project for an overall dredging project that we're working on here in the city. We're at Canal 20. We're working on relocating 10,000 square feet of seagrasses approximately 300 yards to the uh, west here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this bucket essentially full of seagrasses take them and float them over to the mitigation area and then they're going to be planted in plots. And Peter's in charge of the project here. He's the director over at Tampa Bay Watch. We have six scientists out here and three volunteers working today. And I'm gonna turn this over to Peter so he can explain to you the importance of the seagrass relocation. So this is a historical channel that's gone into the West Shore area, but it's been filling in over the years. And as it fills in, it brings the bay bottom up into the area where light can penetrate deep enough and allow seagrasses to grow. So as this channel is filled, the seagrasses have been able to recolonize in. And as a whole, Tampa Bay has been improving because of water quality improvements over the last 20 years or so. So Tampa Bay Estuary is one of the few estuaries that's been able to see a resurgence in seagrasses coming back into these shallow water areas. So as the seagrass colonizes the channel and the channel needs to be dredged, what we're doing is moving the seagrass that's in the way of that dredging project out into a new area in the bay so that these seagrasses are not lost. And this is a, is a, a pioneering species of seagrass called Haliduli ridei, and it's a very easy seagrass to transplant. It grows very quickly, very rapidly. So as long as you've got very good site conditions and you can do it at the right time of year, uh, we've learned from doing this over the last 20 or 30 years that we can move the Haliduli seagrass out and get it to reestablish. So it's important that as we look around the bay, and find these areas that uh, that need to be dredged or the seagrass needs to be moved, that we look at different opportunities to, to uh, salvage that seagrass and put them back into new areas so it's not wasted and we can provide a new source of seagrass in another location to get it reestablished. And seagrasses here in Tampa Bay, they're a protected aquatic submerged plant. So it's important that we do this relocation project. What is the survival ship rate that we're looking at when we relocate seagrasses of this nature? So the area that's being impacted by the channel dredging is about 10,000 square feet. We are going to move that over to a 20,000 square foot mitigation area. And what what we need at a minimum is to be able to have 50 percent of those seagrasses grow in order to replace the areas that are impacted. Now because water quality improvements in the area that we're transplanting to is twice as big as the area that was impacted, certainly we would like to have a higher percentage of uh, success of the seagrasses out there so that we can expand the area uh, of seagrasses out in Tampa Bay. But at a minimum we need to replace the area that was impacted because of the channel dredging. And here in Tampa Bay, seagrasses are an indicator for water quality. And in, in the past, in the 50s, we had lost a significant amount of acreage here in Tampa Bay. But as of the 2014 report, we're showing vast improvements as far as the, the amount and acreage of seagrasses. It's really impressive to see the level of seagrasses returning in Tampa Bay because of everything that we've done over the last 20 or 30 years to improve water quality. And seagrasses are critical for fish and wildlife resources. The seagrass beds on the bottom of the bay provide habitat for a lot of fish and wildlife that are commercially and recreationally valuable in the bay. So it's, it's really important that we are able to maintain and improve these seagrass communities wherever we can.
City of Tampa cares about its natural resources and habitat protection in Tampa Bay. With the seagrass restoration project here on Canal 20, we'll be able to restore some vital habitat. This is Spotlight Tampa, Heather Maggio.